were still held in awe. There they were summoned by the Roman governor who wanted to hear of their strange new god. But they were mocked by his court magician, Elima. Paul turned on him angrily. You son of the devil, the hand of the Lord is against you, and you will be blind for a while, unable to see the sun. The governor, astonished by Paul's powers, accepted the faith. Paul had gained his first powerful convert. Inspired by God's clear approval for his mission, Paul now turned his sights towards Asia Minor. He would travel to such far-flung cities as Pisidian Antioch, Iconium, Lystra and beyond. Willing to overcome every hardship to take his message of salvation to the furthest reaches of the empire. As Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. But when he eventually reached the city of Antioch in the city, he was met with ridicule from the assembled Jews. How can a man rise from the dead, they jeered. Since you reject the word of God and judge yourselves to be unworthy of eternal life, we are now turning to the Gentiles. With these words, Paul changed the course of history. By taking the word to those outside the Jewish faith, the Gentiles, he opened the way for Christianity to become a world religion. With renewed fervor, Paul went in search of pagan converts. Few along the way cared for Paul's new God. Until at last, Paul and Barnabas arrived at the city of Lystra, where Paul performed another miracle. With healing hands, he enabled a lame man to walk again. Astounded, the crowd hailed Paul and Barnabas as the pagan gods Zeus and Hermes. Sacrifices were prepared in their honor. Paul was horrified at their pagan offerings. We are ordinary men like you. Turn from your idols to the true living God. Incensed by this rejection, the mob turned suddenly. They dragged them from the city, stoned them, and left them for dead. Against the odds, Paul and Barnabas survived. And over the next year, the seeds that they had sown began to bear fruit.
the word spread to Cappadocia, where early Christian communities flourished in the caves hewn from the soft rock. journey's end, Barnabas returned to Jerusalem. Paul remained in Asia Minor and wrote letters of inspiration to his new Gentile converts. Remember that at one time you Gentiles were separated from Christ, having no hope. You are no longer strangers, but are members of the household of God. In the year A.D. 50, Paul reached the Aegean Sea on the western edge of Asia Minor. Across the water lay a world as yet untouched by Christianity. Roman Europe. That night, Paul dreamt of a man from Macedonia calling him. Paul was convinced that God was telling him to continue his journey that his ultimate destiny lay in Europe. His first stop was the capital of Macedonia, the city of Philippi, now part of northern Greece. The century before, Philippi had fallen to Rome. Its gates declared it was controlled by the Senate and the people of Rome. Roman law governed the city. All religions were tolerated as long as they caused no breach of the peace. Shrines to many different gods were carved into the rock surrounding the city. Bustling streets, Paul could sense the people's minds were open to new faiths. Here in the busy marketplace, Paul set out his own way, his faith. He spoke of a mortal woman named Mary who had given birth to a god. It was a message which was to touch the hearts of women throughout the ancient world. The first to embrace the faith was a wealthy merchant named Lydia. She took Paul here to her house. And here she was baptized. Her home became Europe's first Christian household. 